A lot of times it's easier to remember something by using a mnemonic. That's an easy to recall word where each letter represents another word. I want to offer you a mnemonic that will help you recall four words that capture the most important human factors concepts. I may be guilty of oversimplification, but a lot of people say to keep it simple. Dagmar, what do you think of when I say pear? Well, I, I think of a, a greenish yellow fruit that tastes really sweet when you can find one ripe. It seems like they're hard to find in grocery stores. Right. I think most people would have the same idea and the same complaint about pears in the grocery store. But I suggest that you take the word pear and let the letters represent the four key things that you would consider in a human factors program. I started to use the pear concept with Dr. Mike Maddox in the early 90s. We were trying to be sure that the international client at that time would remember the primary human factors principles once the class was over. We felt that existing models were abstract, they were hard to recall, and not matched to maintenance. All right, enough history, Dr. Bill. Exactly what does P-E-A-R stand for? P stands for people. If you're going to address human factors, you have to know about the workers or about the humans that are going to use the products. You must pay attention to the many physical and psychological factors that affect how people are prepared to do their job. Dagmar, can you think of a people issue? Yeah, yeah, I can. I can think of at least two categories of people issues, mental and physical. Mental or psychological issues could include attitude, aptitude, knowledge, the amount of training and experience, and the general mental fitness for duty. Now, the physical issues, those can include any such thing as um, gender, size, strength, vision, physical fitness, and more. Uh, that's an excellent answer. Uh, by the way, some call the study of uh, physical human factors ergonomics, but it's generally okay to interchange the terms. However, the term human factors is more widely used. The next one is E for environment. Ah, now that one is easy. Hot, cold, wet, dry, light, dark. Now those are environmental issues. Well, you're 50% correct on that one. You described the physical environment. That's the easy one to address with proper clothing, with heating, venting, ventilation, and cooling systems, or by adding proper lighting for the task. The other environment is called the socio-technical environment. Now, that's a fancy term for issues like management, labor cooperation, establishment of a safety culture, company profitability, job security, and more. Of course, this environment is tougher to measure and to maintain uh, than the physical environment, However, they're both important. So the next letter in pair is A, which stands for actions. What are we talking about there? I guess that means to look at the specific actions that people do at work, like the objectives of the job. What are the many tasks that are necessary to complete the job? Are the tasks completed, are they one at a time, or can many go on in parallel? I mean, there must be at least a million things to consider in each action. Yeah, that million estimate, it's a good one. It's an interesting number. Uh, once you identify the actions and break them into tasks, then you define the skills, the number of people needed, the types of equipment and tools, and the performance standard to determine what's the acceptable quality uh, and safety. So actions is yet another important part of human factors planning. The last letter is R for resources. What do you think we mean by that one? Hmm. All right, let's see. The P stands for people. The E is for the environment where the people work, and A stands for the actions that they perform. So the resources would include having and using technical manuals, tools, other coworkers, enough time to complete the job, and enough training, on and on and on. I mean, I guess it would even include the company's ability to pay a fair wage with good benefits and to retain a qualified and happy workforce. Another excellent answer. As you start listing resources, it's hard to avoid talking about the other letters in pair. It all ties together, and that's why pair is an excellent way to think and talk about human factors issues. Depending on the amount of time available, this presentation may go deeper into the many aspects that can be included in the pair. Talk about the P's, the E's, the A's, and the R's in your workplace.